the salad is so so cooling bring on the heat i say Hello, hello! I'm Mel. Welcome to my cooking channel, Mel's Gluten Free Symphony. This is for sure one of my top five summer salads. It's got cabbage, bacon, apple, candied walnuts, and so much more. Let's begin, shall we? I've got this beautiful array of fresh fruit and veg here that I've already cleaned and washed thoroughly. This head of purple cabbage weighs approximately 400 grams. To me, it has a more peppery, earthy flavor profile that complements the sweetness of the other ingredients pretty nicely. These beetroots combined weigh approximately 200 grams. I saw these bright green apples at the store and I just couldn't resist using them. They have such a deliciously tart flavor. Both these combined weigh approximately 240 grams. Next ingredient is the crispy iceberg lettuce. This head weighs approximately 175 grams. Finally, we have the humble carrot. I'll be using two. Both combined weigh approximately 200 grams. A little lime is required to curb the oxidation process of the apples while chopping. Regardless, the apples must always be done last. To prep these fresh goodies, all you need is a good sturdy grater and a sharp knife. Now let's get chopping. Oh, I almost forgot. You'll also need a peeler for removing the carrot and beetroot skins. Okay, now let's begin. I'll be starting with the cabbage. The first step to cleaning it would be to chop off the excess stock. Next chop it in half. Now this particular cabbage head, in spite of it being relatively small, still contain a large heart. Regardless, before chopping the leaves, you'll definitely need to cut out this portion as it isn't a pleasant texture to chew on. <laughs> to make cutting it out easier, the cabbage head needs to be quartered, which then gives you a corner to work with. Place a flat side down and chop out the heart at an angle. Chop it out from both sides if you have to. Do this with the remaining quarters and now you can begin finally chopping your cabbage. Cut perpendicular to the length of the cabbage to get nice bite-sized pieces or else you land up with long noodle-like shreds. Those popping purple red tones just give a fresh look to the overall dish. I guess you could substitute with green cabbage if you like. Once that's done, transfer it into your mixing bowl and move on to the carrots. Using a vegetable peeler, peel the skin of the carrots, making sure you get all the skin. At times, the wrinkles in the skin tend to store some residual mud even after thoroughly washing them. Once you're done peeling both, chop off the pointy ends. Now, if you're using a food processor, go ahead and chop off both ends of the carrots and, well, of course, you know the rest. If you're using a box grater like mine, do not chop off the tops. They provide a good grip during grating. Be very careful, guys. A small distraction could lead to some knuckle skin shavings. Blood, sweat and tears may sound like a good backstory, but trust me, you'd rather come out of it unscathed. First, make sure your surface is dry, then hold down the grater firmly and begin scraping with a downward motion. After your carrots are fully grated, transfer them to the same mixing bowl. Clean off all the excess carrot shavings from your grater. Like I said before, this thing is super sharp, so you don't want anything getting in the way of grating your next vegetable. So when I prep a salad, I usually take a break from grating by prepping a vegetable or fruit that requires a simple chopping motion. It just helps my arm recover a little bit. And this iceberg lettuce is perfect. First, chop off the stalk, then cut it in half. And just like the cabbage, cut it perpendicular to the leaves. Once that's done, keep it aside in the mixing bowl. Now that our arms are nice and greased, let's move on to the beetroot. The peeling and grating process is similar to that of the carrots. Peel the skin, cut the root ends, leaving the tops. Make sure your surface is clean and dry and while holding down the box grater firmly, begin grating the beetroots with a downward motion. Then transfer the grated beetroots to the mixing bowl. To prep the apples, you first need to have your piece of lime ready. Cut the apple in quarters, then remove the core using a small coring knife or just about any small sharp knife. Work with one apple at a time, spritzing a little lime. My gosh, what a rhyme! <laughs> okay, snapping back. So you want to rub some lime on the exposed apple pieces while you're working on the rest. 
Then finally slice the quarters. I prefer keeping the skin side down while cutting the slices as the fleshy portion allows me to make more precise cuts. You could substitute this variety with the sweet and crisp red gala apples. The red delicious variety is super tasty but because it's so soft, it won't hold up during the tossing of the salad. Next, just layer a couple of slices and cut them into matchstick size strips. And now you've got your julienne-like apples. I say julienne-like because, come on, we aren't trained chefs here. Just some simple home cooking lovers. Spritz some more lime over all the chopped apple in the mixing bowl. Now that all your fruit and veg are prepped, cover it and keep it in the fridge while you work on the rest of the salad. Time for some candied walnuts. Chop up 130 grams of walnuts till you get bite-sized pieces. If the walnuts are already your desired munching size, then skip this step. Before we begin caramelizing the nuts, we need to be prepared. You need to just lightly grease a baking tray with oil or melted butter as we'll be toppling the molten candied walnuts onto this tray to cool and harden. And you don't want it sticking to the surface. Make sure the tray is large enough to fit all the nuts in one layer. Now we need to caramelize some sugar. So empty out 65 grams of white sugar into a heavy bottom saucepan. Now over a medium low flame, using a wooden spoon or silicon spatula, begin melting the sugar. Ensure that the sugar is more or less evenly spread out in the saucepan. Apart from that, minimal intervention is required during the melting and caramelization stages. I recommend using stainless steel or cast iron for this purpose. As there isn't a foolproof way for controlling the temperature rise during caramelization, it could ruin your hardy non-stick pan. Patience is most definitely a virtue when making caramel. As it begins to melt, just lightly stir it and leave it. When it starts to develop a light yellow color, stir it again. Just make sure all the sugar is melting uniformly. Once it develops a rich golden color, toss in your chopped walnuts and stir continuously till all the pieces are coated in this sweet lava. If you've never made candied walnuts at home before, you're definitely going to forget about those store-bought ones. And if you've never had candied walnuts before, my gosh, are you in for a treat. After about a minute of stirring, switch off the flame and empty them out onto the prepared greased tray. Now using a fork and spatula, just separate the pieces as much as possible. No need to be too persnickety about this as it's very easy to break the bits apart when it's cooled as well. It's just done to retain the candied shells though. Now leave them aside to cool completely. I've got 8 beautifully cut bacon rashers here, all of even thickness so it fries in pretty much the same time. The quickest way to cut them is to first layer them one on top of the other and then cut them lengthways. After which, you need to turn them 90 degrees and cut them breadthways. Cut them in roughly 1 cm squares. Now transfer them into a large non-stick pan and cook them over medium-low flame. When you start to see some sizzling, toss them around and leave it to fry some more. After about 3-4 to four minutes, the fat will begin to render. Toss them once more, leaving the flame as is. You may be tempted to hasten this process, but trust me, the best method for perfectly crispy bacon is keeping it low and slow. Keep frying it for another 4 minutes or so till the fat develops a light brown colour and the meaty parts take on a deep reddish brown colour. Empty the fried bacon bits into a heat-proof bowl and leave it aside to cool and crisp up. What do I do with all that bacon fat, you ask? I drink it! Okay, uh, I'm kidding. I store it in an airtight container and keep it in the fridge for my future cooking. If I could, I'd have crispy bacon with everything. The last piece to this refreshing salad puzzle, the creamy tangy yogurt dressing. To start, you'll need 100 grams of yogurt, 45 ml or 3 tablespoons apple cider vinegar, 30 ml or 2 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, 1 third teaspoon salt and a quarter teaspoon freshly ground pepper. I guess you could reduce or increase the salt depending on your dietary needs. Now you just need to stir it up. Once your oil is emulsified into the yogurt and cider, your salad dressing is done! It's super simple and ties together all the sweet, tart and meaty flavours of the salad. Congratulations! You've made it to the salad tossing! Make sure all your ingredients are ready for some mixing. First, you'll need to mix in your dressing. Keep tossing till all your fresh fruit and veg are coated in this delicious creamy tart sauce. Quick tip, as the juices from the fresh fruit and veg as well as the dressing soften the crunch of the candied walnuts and crispy bacon, I recommend tossing them in just prior to dishing out the salad. 
anyway since this is a recipe video and i'm going to be diving into this very soon i'll be tossing in the crispy bacon and candied walnuts i've also decided to leave some aside for the top garnish both these are quite addictive on their own so maybe prepare this dish on a three quarter full stomach <laughs> Toss the salad till everything is well combined and it is complete. It's a very quick recipe that you can wow your guests with any time. Or you can hog on it yourself. I've done both. So what are you waiting for? Whip it up and give it a try and let me know how it goes. Serve it out in your fancy salad bowl and go ahead and make a meal of it. If this video refreshed your taste buds, don't be shy, drop a comment and click that like button. And if you're into cooking like me, you're going to love what I have in store for you. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you around. Bye-bye. I can totally get used to this part of my videos. <laughs>